Hybrid Copad schedule shows behind schedule. How come your EVM schedule performance indicates an ahead of schedule status? What is wrong with your SPI report? We are going to finish this project three months behind the schedule. Tell me why your SPI is showing a good schedule performance. Have you ever faced an angry customer or project manager screaming, what is wrong with your EVM schedule performance report? You are late and yet you show me good schedule performance? What is going on here? Hi, I am Shara Gorbani. I'm the founder and director of Project Control Academy, an academy that helps you enhance your knowledge and skills in project controls so you can take your career to the next level of success. You know, earned value management uh, has proven itself to be one of the most efficient performance measurement and feedback tools for managing projects um, as outlined in PMI practice standard for earned value management as well as many other practice standards out there. However, EVM implementation and interpretation may cause some difficulties to those who are new to the EVM concept or does not have a deep understanding and appreciation of EVM. A gray area in earned value management that has created lots of debates and dilemmas is the EVM scheduling metrics, so which are Scheduled Performance Index, SPI, and Scheduled Variance, or SV. In this training, I would like to make you aware of the issues with the EVM scheduling metrics, especially toward the final third of your project. So next time you are faced with an angry client questioning the accuracy of your EVM report, you know how to respond. So EVM uses two primary schedule performance indicators to evaluate the schedule status. They are Schedule Performance Index, or SPI, and Schedule Variance, or SV. To calculate these scheduling metrics, you need to have two key elements in EVM. One is planned value, and another one is earned value. Planned value, also known as performance measurement baseline, is the project time phase budget which is resulted from the project planning effort. Your total plan value should always match your total approved budget. Now on earned value, earned value is the value of your accomplishment, the value of what has been actually accomplished in the project. And earned value is determined as the physical percent um, of your budget, basically how much has been accomplished uh, in terms of dollar value. So once you have your plan value and earned value, you can determine the schedule performance index and schedule variance. So let me walk you over those briefly. The Schedule Performance Index, or SPI, is a measure of schedule efficiency. SPI measures the value of work performed against the work that is scheduled. So as you can see, the formula for SPI is earned value divided by plan value. The Schedule Variance, or SV, determines whether a project is ahead or behind schedule uh, in accomplishing the work that is planned. The schedule variance is the difference between the earned value and the planned value. So to help you better understand this, let me walk you over a simple example, just the same example I'm using here. So let me walk you through um, some numbers so you can better understand this. So in the same example we have here, let's do some calculation on schedule variance and schedule performance index. So here you can see my earned value is $300 and my plan value is $430. So can you tell me what my SPI is? That's right, SPI is plan value, sorry, earn value over my plan value, which would be 300 over 430, or it's going to be 0.7. Do you know what that means if I have an SPI of 0.7, what that means? Well, it means that the work is being accomplished at 70% of its planned rate. It means that if uh, I have been working 8 hours per day and my SPI is 0.7, it means that 70% of the time I was productive in finishing the work. Or it's going to be around 5.5 hours of work out of 8 hours I've been productive. So that's what it means. 
Now going back to scheduled variance, can you tell me what the scheduled variance is? Is it negative or positive? Yes, my scheduled variance is negative because my earned value is less than plan value. I'm earning less than what I'm uh, planning to earn. That's why I'm having a negative scheduled variance. Or so if you want to calculate, it's going to be minus one hundred thirty dollars. Now. Based on this simple example, I'm sure you can tell me what those uh, SPI and scheduled variance mean in a project. What do they indicate? So if I have the scheduled performance index less than one or a negative scheduled variance, it means that uh, the work is completed uh, less than, uh, the less work is completed than the plan or we are behind schedule. And if SPI is over one and uh, scheduled variance is positive, it means that more work is completed than planned. So it's an indication of, yes, ahead of schedule. And if uh, SPI is a one and scheduled variance is zero, it means that we are right on target, we are right on the schedule. But this interpretation comes with a big warning. So uh, I would like to warn you about the SPI and scheduled variance or EVM scheduling metrics that an unfavorable SPI or scheduled variance does not necessarily mean a scheduled slippage. On the other hand, a favorable SPI or scheduled variance does not also indicate an ahead of schedule status. You might question why, but your index is showing that and you already showed me that if it's positive, it means ahead. If it's negative, it means behind. So what's going on here? Can you tell me why I cannot rely on those uh, scheduling metrics? Well, for several reasons. The first and main reason is that earned value management measure uh, those indexes or those things like EVM scheduling metrics. Everything is based on dollars, not based on units of time. And I believe you cannot talk about time in terms of dollars, can you? What it does basically, the scheduling metrics uh, show whether less or more work is accomplished than your plan and everything is calculated according to the dollar value. If you remember the example I showed you, the scheduled variance was minus $130. SPI was earned value over plan value. Everything was in dollar figures. That's why uh, earned value measurement, um, you know, the scheduling metrics in earned value are independent of the critical path. The only link between your schedule and the earned value is your plan value. Hopefully you get your plan value out of the resource loaded schedule. Other than that, they're really independent. So you have to make sure that you analyze your schedule along with those EVM metrics and you just should not rely only on your EVM metrics to tell you the schedule status. That can only be determined by analyzing your critical path schedule. Another issue with that, so that was one main issue that you might see with the EVM scheduling metrics based on the units of measure, dollar instead of time. Another big issue with the scheduling metrics for EVM uh, happens toward the end of the project. You know, those metrics become very unreliable toward the two-third of the project as we approach the end date. Let me show you why. In our example here, as you can see, my earned value is less than plan value. So by using uh, EVM scheduling metrics, I'm predicting that I'm going to be behind, right? Because I'm earning less than what I planned to earn. Therefore, I'm having some negative schedule variance and I will experience some schedule slippage. So if I want to draw the SPI trend curve, do you know how it's going to look like? Okay, let's first look at the SPI formula. So SPI is earned value over plan value. So from January to April, from the beginning of the project to now, you can see my earned value has been constantly less than my plan value. So my SPI has been what? 
Yes, it was less than one. So if I want to draw the SPI curve here, and if it's time now here, and that's the completion, uh, original project completion time. So if I want to draw that, it would be something like this. From the beginning to where I am now, it has been less than one. And if you want to draw something similar for a scheduled variance, that's the same, the same concept, right? Uh, instead of one, it's going to be zero. Now I want to show you what's going to happen at the end of the project and in this project we know that we are going to be late so we know that we are going to be finishing the project later than what we have planned to finish. Now I want to show you what's going to happen at the end. So let me walk you over these formulas again to show you exactly what's going to happen. My SPI is earned value over plan value, right? So can you tell me um, how much my SPI is going to be at the end of the project? Is it going to be less than one over one equal to one? Can you predict? Okay, let's again dig uh, more into this formula to understand what's going on at the end. What's happening at the end of the project? Yes, we have completed all the deliverables. We have accomplished everything. So my progress is how much? Yes, 100%. Do you remember the formula for earned value? Yes, my earned value was progress, percent complete, multiplied by my budget. So it's going to be what at the end of the project? 100% of the budget or it's going to be my budget. How about the plan value? How much would be my plan value at the end of the project? You remember I told you earlier, no matter what, your total plan value should always equal to your budget at completion, your approved budget, whatever it is. So at the end of the project, your total plan value would be equal to, yes, your budget at completion. Therefore, SPI at the end of the project would be what? That's right, it's going to be 1 because it's 100% of the budget over budget is 1. Or in another words, earned value is equal to plan value. Therefore, at the end of the project, my SPI is 1 and schedule variance is 0. So what that means? Means what? Perfect schedule performance, unscheduled completion. But we already know that we are late. So let me draw this and show you what, what's happening here. So as I continue, you know, plotting this SPI curve, you can see despite the delay I have at the end of the project, I see my schedule performance showing improvement and it reaches the one line, or if I'm drawing the schedule variance curve, it's going to reach uh, the zero or zero schedule performance variance and perfect schedule performance. So now the question that I have for you is, What's going to happen? How do you uh, interpret this toward the end of the project? The improvement that you see at the end when the SPI starts uh, improving or scheduled variance is getting better, then does it show better scheduled performance or it's a false indication of better performance? So remember, no matter how late or early you finish the project, at the end of the project, your SPI is always one and your scheduled variance is always zero. That's why, you know, even the Department of Defense, who is the initiators of this earned value um, um, 32 criteria and, you know, basically initiator of EVM and the pioneer of applying EVM in um, the defense type projects, they also know the issue with the SPI and scheduling uh, index in earned value. And they have mentioned that earned value, uh, an earned value schedule variance is stated in terms of dollars of work and must be analyzed in conjunction with your schedule. As I already mentioned, another uh, thing that they said by itself, the earned value schedule variance reveals no critical path information and may be misleading because unfavorable accomplishment in some area may be offset by favorable accomplishment in other areas. Therefore, the message here is you cannot rely only and only on EVM scheduling metrics to understand and assess the schedule status. 
you have to always complement your uh, schedule analysis uh, along with the EVM metrics or sorry I have to say it the other way around you have to always complement your EVM scheduling metrics along with your schedule analysis especially analyzing the critical path and near critical path analysis and that's the only way that you can understand what's going on in your project in terms of the schedule but um, you know you might question okay so should I ignore or this uh, EVM scheduling metrics altogether if they are not reliable? No. As I said, toward the, uh, until toward the end, they are still reliable, but you have to really use them with caution and you have to always um, analyze your schedule alongside analyzing your EVM metrics. And sometimes when you do those together, your EVM scheduling metrics uh, sometimes reveal great information about your project, especially if those two metrics are contradictory. For example, if your SPI shows ahead of schedule while your schedule is behind. So when you dig down into your schedule, then you might understand something causing that issue. So always those EVM scheduling metrics um, provide a good warning signal for you that kind of raise a flag that, okay, now go deep into your project uh, schedule and understand what's happening in your project. So that's my message to you in this training that don't rely only on your EVM scheduling metrics and unfortunately this is what most uh, uh, clients doesn't understand about this issue with the scheduling metrics and they keep questioning you about that or some people who are just studying earn value might be confused when you know they see something such a weird behavior of SPI and um, schedule a variance special toward the end of the project so hopefully that training clarified some of those uh, issues that you might have faced uh, with applying those metrics in your project. Now, you might question, but what can I do toward the end, at the end of the project with this quirky behavior of my SPI and schedule variance? Is there any solution? Uh, yes, there are a lot of ways that you can improve uh, the accuracy of your SPI and schedule variance. And one of the newly merged techniques to do that is earned schedule, which has been uh, considered as an improvement to earned value management uh, practice or as an extension to earned value management it has been recently added in 2011 I believe as it has been added to PMI practice standard for earned value management but it's started from 2003 um, so it's kind of a fairly new concept not new anymore it has been around for a decade but recently has been adopted to practice standards so if you're interested to know more about it and schedule as a way to resolve the issue with your um, you know uh, SPI and schedule variance stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to show you the concept of errand schedule and how you can apply it in your project. Now, if you have any question about this training, please post your comments or questions down below so I can assist you. And if you found this training valuable, if it added value to you and if it helped you to understand the concept of EVM scheduling metrics better, please give me a high five by liking and sharing this video with your coworkers. Until the next episode of Project Control Mastery, do your best in everything that you do, my friend, and make a difference. Hello, this is Shore. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you continue to get updates every time that I release new training for you. Simply hit the subscribe button and you will be all set. If you have ever wondered uh, or wanted to learn how to become distinguished for your ability to control and lead projects to a successful completion, I'd like to give you something special that I'm sure you're going to love. I have developed series of training videos on air and value management absolutely for free. Yes, for free. If you have ever wondered what air and value management is and how it can assist you in understanding the true status of your projects, make sure that you watch the EVM training series that I have put together for you. Just click on the link below this post or go to projectcontroltraining.com forward slash EVM free training and then enter your name and email so I can email you the training video series. 
Thanks again for tuning in everyone. Until next time that I see you, do your best in everything that you do and make a difference.